that are not free. There's some things you get from the Lord that are freely. Freely given, freely given. Yeah. Amen. We've not received the spirit of, of, of uh, but the spirit of adoption that we might know the things that are freely given to us. But then what do you do when you are look needing in need of something that's not free? That's when you got to pay a price. And sometimes that's where fasting come in. Fasting and prayer. Because fasting is not about digging in, it's about digging deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's going out today, going to dig in. But sometimes you, huh, leave it. But sometimes you can't, it ain't about doing this. It's about putting it down and giving God time, giving God room. I know what I'm saying. And so we've got we to gotta appreciate this, this ability or this offer to hear from God. Amen. Glory to God. All right, so there is a passion. Amen. Jeremiah 3 and 3, there's a passion. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. Some of us never, you know, right now we've got a pretty good house here, a pretty good house. But I guarantee you if this was a prayer call. Huh? That hurt? Huh? Move your feet because I'm coming. But, but no, no. See, we don't have as many show up for prayer. Because we don't have a passion in prayer. And one of the reasons we've not learned how to delight ourselves in prayer, because we think we're coming to do all the talking. But if you really understood, you know, I hate to say this example, but it's like, I'm going to, you know, when we come to prayer, I'm coming to be with God. Huh? You know how we say, Carrie, we say, I'm going to be with her. That's, that's too much TMI, amen. My point is this. When you say you're going to be with somebody, you're talking about romance. Y'all don't forget? So my point is, when you pray, you're going to be. I'm going to be with, and that's where the passion comes. That's the delight. That is the draw. That's the attraction. But you don't see it that way. And I'm saying we've got to get back to seeing prayer as spending time with God. When you spend time with God, you won't leave the same way you came. Hmm. So, not that I need the time to do it, but uh, I was going to talk to you about the different parts of your body, your being, your spirit, soul, body, your body, your touch, taste, feel, hear, and smell, you know. But your soul has in it the mind, the will, and the emotion, but it also has this other component, the conscience. And many times in order to recognize God's voice, you've got to understand how the conscience works. Your conscience, 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 conscience. Con, it's actually two words, conscience, C-O-N, mm -hmm, con, S-C-I-E-N-C-E, -E, science. Science means to know. The science of it is to know. Con means to know with or to know together with, to together know, to together know. And so what you have as a conscience, and before you got saved, you had a conscience, but it wasn't necessarily programmed by the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to hip it now. Because sometimes you think you're not hearing from God, but you are. And most of you would say to me, but pastor, I hear something. But you may just be hearing from your conscience. Your conscience is like this microphone. You can hear your conscience, something. You hear a voice. Touch them out and tell them, I hear things, I hear things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's that food you ate. But I'm saying, I hear things. I hear things, I hear things. But how do I know it's God? The Holy Ghost will take the voice of your conscience. That's why when the Holy Ghost speaks, it sounds like you. The intonation, the inflection. And that's why the Bible says, amen, the word of God is quick and sharp and into his sword, discerning spirit from soul, barrel from bone. And as a discerner, you need the word of God to discern, is this me or is this God? That's true. In fact, and then some of you don't like it when I say it, but sometimes I say, did God say it or did you make him say it? What's that all about? You can have so, such a want. I won't say, you can have such a wish, Sister Curry. Amen. Amen. You wished it so hard until you heard God. <laughs> you say you heard God. But I keep telling people, if you don't learn your, from your mistakes, the devil will. No, no, tell somebody that. If you don't learn from your mistakes, the devil will. 
Y'all better hear me this morning. Amen. So you need to not be, not be hit and miss. You want to, God will give you a space. Thank God for confirmation. Did y'all hear that? Thank God for his ability to confirm. Because you're not sure at first. When you start off, you kind of, I'm thinking this God, but I'm not sure. But God will give you confirmation. He will. That's how much he loves you. Glory to God. He'll have people and things and situations. The Bible says wisdom crieth in the street. God will let a circumstance confirm his word. He will. He will. So, 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 so recognizing the voice of God. I'm ready. Recognizing the voice of God. Help me, God, to hear your voice. God is always speaking. But unfortunately, we aren't always listening. And not, don't just sit there and say, well, I don't think it's all of that or it's not that important. It's the most important thing. It's the difference between your life and the abundant life. Being able to hear. Being able to hear from God. You're born again, the Holy Ghost starts to reprogram your conscience, your, your inner voice. The Bible says we have an unction. I'm not going to be able to finish it. We have an unction, which is the Holy Spirit. And he knoweth all things. We must learn how to delight ourselves in him. And do you not know one of the things I guess I'll say before I close? When you hear God, it's the way God shifts you to new ministry opportunities, new assignments. Every assignment that God has given me at Cain, I had an encounter. You don't have to take my word for it, but I wouldn't lie to you. God told me. In fact, while I was in Africa, God had been dealing with me about something. I'm testifying. God had been dealing with me about something, and I've been procrastinating. I came back, and even though you hear me say this all the time, when I obey God, people get blessed. I say that, though. But, you know, in our, we don't want to hurt, we don't want to disappoint, we don't want to, we don't, you don't want to disappoint people, you don't want to let people down, you won't, but I procrastinated, but you know what I, what happened to me? My peace started to leave me. I'm telling you what happened to me. And as I sensed my peace leaving me and I was praying, I said, Lord, I don't, that's what those tears were about two weeks ago. When that peace started to leave you, God said in so many words, he said, I know how to get your attention. I was procrastinating. But when I said yes to God and did what God told me to do, made those calls, after that first call, I felt my peace coming back. Second call, more peace. Y'all don't want this, I see. Because this may be happening in your life. Be careful for nothing but in everything through prayer, supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God will keep your heart and your mind. Colossians 3.15, let the peace of God rule in your heart. The word ruler is the word, amen, compass. The peace of God becomes like the umpire. You look it up, I did. It, it tells you when things are good or not good. It's like that traffic light that y'all came through this morning. You got three lights. You got red, you got yellow, you got green. If it's red, that means stop. In the beginning, it's just that simple. Green mean what? Go. And we don't have a problem with green. We don't have a real problem with stop. It's that yellow. It's that yellow. Proceed with caution. That's the one we don't... I better leave that. Huh? We don't mind if God said, don't you go out with him. Stop! And we certainly don't mind if the Lord said, go ahead and enjoy. But that one when he said, look, proceed with caution. That's the one. Y'all don't want this, I see. Come on, say it again. I can hear from God. Day and night. Night and day, I recognize the voice of God. Now that may not seem important to you right now, but that's your life, baby. That's your life, being able to hear from God. 
Thank God for church and Bible study, but you need to hear. God, God is concerned about what concerns you. All right. I think that's all I'm able to get to today, but recognizing the voice of God, being able to hear from God. And what I began to you by saying, if you believe, I'm through, that I am for you, priest, prophet, that I have been in God's presence, and now I come to you with what thus saith the Lord. Your question in coming ought to be, is there a word? When you receive it as it is the word of God, then you can be glad. Then it brings to you its own rewards. I'll leave that. I'll leave that. Speak to my heart. Holy Spirit. Stand to your feet.